What is up guys? You're watching Bob's Decline. Today we're going to be taking an up close and personal look at an oil recloser. All right, so this unit you see here on the pole is an oil recloser. There, there's a few different types of reclosers, a vacuum type, electronic reclosers. This one is an oil filled recloser. The source side of this comes off to our left. There's a substation that's actually just up the road there. So we're only a few span from the sub. And this feeds down probably about 300 span or so, three, maybe 400 span. So the purpose of the oil recloser is both protection as well as it prevents outages. If, if this line was simply fused with a fuse in the cutout, if there was a fault down the line from something fairly trivial, a, a small branch or an animal, it would blow the fuse and there would be a power outage. With this unit, once the oil recloser senses the inrush of current, it will trip open and immediately close back in depending on the settings. Most of our reclosers are set at three shots. We do get a lot of phone calls, a lot of work orders, or trouble calls I should say, for flickering lights. And a lot of times those flickering light calls are a result of a recloser or a of some sort operating. It could be, as I said, something as simple as a squirrel or a bird getting into the lines. Maybe the wind blew the very tip of a branch enough that when it made contact with the primary, it tripped that recloser for a brief moment. So a lot of times when your lights go completely off, completely back on, it is normal system function and the fault either cleared itself or the fault's on a piece of line that's protected by a fuse that was isolated during the process. So as I did mention, the source side is coming from our left and you'll see that the source leads, those are 7200 volts from phase to ground, 12470 phase to phase. It comes into the top of the cutouts, but that isn't always the case. Uh, generally, generally speaking it is, but you, you can't rely on the source always being on the top side of the cutout. So there is another protection device at the substation. In the event of a fault on the source side, um, it'll operate the protection at the substation. These cutouts we're looking at in front of us are not fused. They have a solid copper door, which is rated for 300 amps. Now these guys that you see right there at the tip of my finger, that's a lightning arrestor. It's basically a high resistance path to ground, high enough resistance that uh, it's, it's certainly not a dead short, but if you get a lightning strike where you could have upwards of a million volts, it'll, it'll find its path to ground pretty quickly and drain that, that hazardous voltage out of the lines. You can see at the bottom of the lightning arrestor, that piece of copper right on that brass nut. Piece of copper runs over the pole and then that is bonded down through into not only our neutral but also our pole ground, which is beneath that covered molding there. So we, we do run off a multi granite system here where everything that is at neutral potential is also bonded to ground. You can see the unit as a whole also has a piece of copper running into it over here. So if you were to touch that steel case and touch the neutral, it's, uh, they will be at the same potential as they're bonded together. So moving over here, looking at our oil recloser, you can see there's those little plastic dome covers over the bushings. We, we don't get these calls for animals on these units very often. However, if a squirrel decides to climb up onto the unit and up over top of the bushing, it will offer some protection from knocking out power. You can see on the wire itself, there's also an animal guard. Now, right where that meets the top of the bushing, there is a bare spot that should have been slid, slid down in tight there. There's, there's not much I can do about that right now. Um, I can't go hands-on onto that unit without a hold off and another person with me but it'll, it's something that'll certainly be rectified the next time we, uh, we do any work on this unit. So the source side on the left, it will be identified on the lid, probably by an S or source, and then there'll be a load side. Let's see if we can't get a closer look here. All right, so if we zoom in 
at straighten the steel, you can see it does say source and load side. So we have our load side coming back out onto the main feeder and basically the, the supply is currently feeding through the ore closing unit. So if we look at the, the leads that both energize and on the load side leads of the oil reclosure, they are removable uh, and packed connectors. The bypass is on tap clamps and stirrups. The, the AMPAC connectors have a higher ampacity, so it's, it's a little better setup for, for a permanent connection. Those, those AMPAC connections very rarely fail. However, if we do have to take this unit out of service for any reason, we could take a hold off on the unit at the substation and remove those AMPACs and isolate the device in order to maintain or replace it. Now, did hear me mention the word hold off? Hold off. What it is, is we remove the automatic reclosing function of this device. Uh, the, the breakers at the substations, the oil reclosures, vacuum reclosures, and interrupters, they all have that, that function in order to remove that reclosing ability. And I'll show you guys how we do that on this unit in just a moment. So before we head on over to the other side, you're probably wondering why there's a second set of switches up top here on the cross arm. Now, there's no doors in those cutouts. However, in the event that this unit fails during an outage, which, which isn't common, if we have to remove it from service, we can actually bypass the unit altogether. And at that point, we'd use fused doors and put them in those, those cutouts. So there should be some spare doors attached to the pole here somewhere, which they're oh, in behind. You can see just the tip of one of them right there. So those are pre-fused. Um, the units right now, if we take a look at the nameplate, I believe it's a 140 amp recloser. All right, so we take a look here. It's kind of hard. You probably can't see that in the nameplate, but it is a 140 amp recloser. Uh, 280 amps minimum trip current. Maximum interrupting current is 6,000 amp. So I did mention the non-reclosing feature. You'll see on that stamp right there, non-reclosing. Little gray colored handle right there. We can operate that right from the ground with an extendo stick. Once that's pulled down, the recloser will be in the non-reclosing setting. And that yellow handle right to the right that's, that's the handle that actually dumps the power. Once that's pulled down, it will interrupt power to, to all the customers that this is feeding. And this does have load brake capabilities, so we can operate that while under full load. All right, so now we're on the back side of the recloser. We'll take a closer look. One of the reasons I'm here today actually is to take an oil sample. However, we're not going to be removing any oil today. Uh, in one of my older videos, someone asked about how we know when we can and cannot remove oil. If we look at this gauge here, you can see that little ball bearing floating in the oil there. And the oil level, it's, it's still high enough that I'm not worried about the, the integrity of the unit. However, there is a warning that says the oil level should be above the sight glass. If you can see the oil line, then it should be filled. So rather than take out more oil, we're gonna create a work order to have this guy topped up. You can see that we do have it also tested and maintained. Uh, 2018, this unit was completely removed from service and maintained at our service center, and it's been identified as mineral oil, non-PCB. So if we were to take an oil sample, we'd simply take our waste oil jar, open up that valve, drain a little bit of oil out, and then we'd fill the good jar with, with a little bit clearer oil, hopefully. I also had someone asking about the numbers on the units. You can see this one is R260. That's, that's simply a serial number. The R is for recloser. If it was a voltage regulator, there would be a V. We, we have uh, ID numbers on all of our equipment that we're able to reference it, not only at the service center, but in the field, as well as of all of our documentation in the system. On the pole itself, Let's head on down here. 
So on the pole itself, we've got a couple numbers here. The, the bottom number, 1179, is simply the pole number. And the one above it, again with the R, that identifies the reclosing equipment. So 8001R001, that will identify this recloser. If we had an outage, dispatch would report to check recloser 8001R001, and I'd also refer back to that number for any switching activities on this recloser. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Hopefully that audio made it through all right with all this wind. We're, uh, we're gonna fill out this work order identifying the need for an oil top up and carry on to our next one. So first day back, second day back to vacation. Last night, actually we had uh, three broken poles yesterday on my first day back. We got home, it was just after midnight. It was a pretty, pretty wild first day back. But weather's still great. I appreciate you guys stopping in as always, and we'll see you next time.